uh, course, and they learn how to be tutors under her guidance uh, before they go out and work in the writing center themselves. So we're going to start tonight with Faith. Hello, I'm Faith. I'm a senior at East Haven High School. Um, I took the training class last year, and now I'm in my second semester of being a tutor. A word after a word after a word is power by Margaret Atwood. Oh, thank you. Okay, so the creation of the East Haven uh, High School Writing Center. So in fall of 2022, the teachers who run the class did a UConn PD with potential instructors. Um, they wrote the course proposal and curricula curriculum. And um, I was in one of the classes that Miss Gardner visited, and she worked with teachers to recruit some potential tutors. Um, so that was something that me and my friends were all interested in, and we got the chance to do. Um, in spring of 2023, um, me and some of the other tutors here were the first group of tutors to enroll in the class. So this was the pilot class where we kind of decided what we wanted the writing center to look like. Um, we envisioned the space as far as decorations, um, the environment we wanted. We definitely decided that we wanted a welcoming environment for all students. Um, we pitched the materials and supplies that the room would require, and we got them all within a few months. We used um, a slideshow that we sent to Ms. Velius, and we ordered everything um, from Amazon or wherever else. <laughs> um, we worked with students under supervision. One thing we did in the pilot class was um, some mock sessions, which definitely helped because we all had some questions about how to deal with some su certain students. And then we created a budget for needed materials within the Writing Center. So some successes we've had in the Writing Center. Um, it's continued to grow both in the amount of trained tutors available and in student traffic. Um, we've done this through advertisement, um, using the adaptive scheduler, and also um, just using our social media accounts, which I used as my capstone. Um, the Writing Center has more resources available for students to take advantage of. Um, we've definitely worked on making it a super welcoming environment for everyone. And both students and teachers are more aware of the resources the Writing Center offers. We've worked a lot on marketing, and all of us have taken part of that. Um, some challenges. There have been a few students who would not stay on task, and we definitely did some mock sessions where we learned how to deal with those types of students. Um, we also have students who expect us to do all of their work for them, which we definitely tell them um, when they make comments like that, that that's not what we're here for. We work with the work that they give us. So um, due to it being our first year, we have not seen a lot of traffic, which was expected, but we definitely want to learn how to get some more students in there. And then um, when the writing center is busy, there are times where we do not have enough tutors available. So there have been times where like a freshman English teacher comes in and wants their whole class tutored within a block, which can be difficult when they all have three page essays. But yeah. Hi, I'm Devlin. I'm one of Miss Gardner's and Mrs. Velius's original tutors. I signed up in uh, the second semester of my junior year after being asked to by Miss Gardner. Uh, so um, I'm here to present marketing the writing center. Uh, each so each tutor pursuing the writing center as their capstone must market the space in at least one way. Uh, they have to focus on one way, which can be either writing an email blast or designing a, a poster or a flyer, uh, as seen here. Uh, tutors can push into classes, which involves kind of reaching out to students and seeing where they're struggling and talking to them and especially forming a connection to them. Uh, and tutors just communicate with teachers and fellow students to reinforce interest in the Writing Center. Um, we particularly focus on this after like the creation of the Writing Center to like drum up interest and just get people to know it's there because we wanted to form that connection and we realized that when they start coming, they will. It's just getting them to come. And here we have some materials. Uh, these were created some by our tutors. This one was created by Melania Kornowski, uh, that one by Lainey Diorio, and then Melania Kornowski. Uh, these were created by different posters. I'm sorry, Val. Was that you? Sorry, Val. <laughs> that 
that was created by Valerie Sortito. <laughs> And these were, uh, this is our, used during our first semester of this year to market, and this during our second semester. Hello, I am Nicholas Vacatura. I'm a junior of the class of 2025. I'm going to be talking about our processes of recruiting students. So, Mrs. Gardner, who teaches the instructional class and tutoring, Pitches the idea of becoming a tutor to certain classes and students. There's a form sent out to teachers within the school asking for recommendations on possible tutors. Now these recommendations are subject to evaluation and later approval by those in charge of the writing center. So I'd be Ms. Gardner, Ms. Velius. They do a great job at keeping everything up and running. Candidates are largely students who have taken several honors and advanced placement courses who have demonstrated themselves to be extremely effective within the requirements of the courses. So these are gonna be your top students Candidates are particularly encouraged to continue to pursue honors and AP courses the curriculum offers. Although we have, we have had a lot of students who are in honors and AP courses, that's not a requirement to be a tutor in the Writing Center. And in fact, one of the things that the UConn program coordinators shared with us is that it's more important to have kids with really good uh, interpersonal skills that are willing to work with other kids that can try and draw kids out when they're sitting in a tutoring session and that sometimes somebody that's a really good writer and is going to make very strong interpersonal connections with students may not be an honors kid and this this was very important to consider so um, it's it is an inclusive process if students are interested and want to be a tutor So this is how we help teachers. Um, tutors often push into classes when specifically requested by teachers for assistance. So we essentially act as like tutor, um, teacher assistants in this situation. Tutors provide one-on-one -on -one sessions with students during classes as well as flex. I'm sure we all know that one-on-one um, -on -one tutoring is perhaps the most um, effective form of learning. Tutors often alleviate the pressure on teachers who have a large amount of students by dividing the workload and tutors also consult with teachers on a regular basis to determine possible approaches to assignments, how to handle students, and how to provide effective assistance. So this is a picture of us presenting at UConn for a workshop on the Writing Center. We gained valuable insight on the, lo on the logistics and mechanisms of running a Writing Center. So for creating our space, kind of how Faith talked about before. Oh, wait, sorry. My name is Valerie Shortito, and I started um, learning about the Writing Center last year, and now I'm in my second semester tutor. So back to creating our space, kind of how Faith talked about before, we wanted to make it a welcoming environment. So the way that we did that is we changed the lighting in the room, kind of added like fairy lights um, around the room just to not make it as harsh lighting. Um, in that first image, we have a little book case like shelf thing that we created and it just has different books that would help not only tutors, it has like MLA formats, college essential things. Um, it would help people coming into the writing center if they want to see anything. We have little fidget toys, we have a cure egg, we have little snacks kind of as a push for students to be encouraged to come in and check it out. why we need the Writing Center. So it helps build community, making connections. I know a lot of people that have come to the Writing Center that I would not have met before if it wasn't for them coming in and needing that help. And a lot of that times when you make those connections, they, are, they come back to you and they want to continue building the relationship. You can help others and you learn how to take action to improve your own learning. So when a student recognizes that they need help with something, they're able to find another person in their school that can help them. Connection to the vision of the graduate. So that's obviously like our school ideal is the vision of the graduate. So how it connects to a responsible citizen. As a tutor, responsibility to act appropriately and be a leader. Since this is a student-run club, the people that are selected are expected to uphold a certain way of acting, and that's definitely a responsibility. Goal-directed and resilient individual. So you ensure that work that work hardest to be an effective tutor and work with all kinds of students and you learn not to give up and have patience on people, which definitely is a good thing to learn. 
um, informed thinker. You need to be prepared and have a background on writing and grammar as a tutor. Powerful communicator. You need to know how to communicate effectively with any kind of student that comes. And a resourceful problem solver. Use rubrics, teach mentors, and have other resources to help when tutoring. Hi, I'm Natalie Brown, and I took the um, course this first semester of this year, so I'm in my first semester as a tutor right now. So some of our goals for the future are continuing to expand the program with more tutors. So like, obviously a lot of us right now are seniors, so we're working to get more underclassmen involved so that they get to be tutors when we leave. Um, we enhance the space with more supplies, like a printer, we have the book, um, lots of books, but we could always have some more. It's just stuff that will help with the writing process. And we w are working to be available during all parts of the day. And like having more tutors will definitely help be us be more available. Some resources we have in the Writing Center are a, bi a binder full of grammar rules, writing tips, et cetera, as a reference, the teacher mentors, rubrics on writing assignments to guide tutoring sessions, a bookshelf that contains one copy of every book within the English curriculum at East Haven High School. We just want to say a thank you to Jean Williams who supported our Donors Choose campaign, the administration, and the school community for your continued support. Anybody have any questions for our tutors? So tutors can earn a capstone credit upon completion of extra work, or um, they could just do it for the good goodness of the community. Uh, to add on to what Nick said, and I think Natalie's actually um, capitalizing on this, it's um, we can also earn a recant, but it was approved for the later tutors. Um, we uh, tutors can earn a UConn ECE credit, which is a early college uh, early college experience. Uh, for UConn because it focuses on a specific class. I'm not sure which class, but you would have to ask about that, but it does. Thank you. I have a, just a quick comment. Um, I think that you guys are really doing, it sounds like it's going to break out and it's going to become more popular as it goes through, especially if, if you guys are enjoying it, which it seems like you are. You probably wouldn't you know, be here doing this, but. Um, which is wonderful, I and mean, thank you for that. We all do, but more importantly, kids, even teenagers and high school kids, and everyone's a kid for me, but you know what I'm saying. Um, they learn best from each other, from other students coming to them and sharing what they know and, and, and helping them through the process. I think it's wonderful. I'm, I, you know, thank you for that, because it really does, you'll see positive results even though, like you said, patience, it is a virtue when you'll get there <laughs> and you'll get through it. Thank you. I just want to say also, I was very impressed with your presentation skills. You did a great job with that. Thank you. It's so important. You. I think you have established such a strong foundation for this center that is going to continue to serve so many classes of students for many, many years to come. Thank you for your leadership and your, your vision for this. It means a lot. Mr. Just say, will, will you consider coming back to teach with us when it's completely <laughs> four years? We would really appreciate it. Are you going into education, anybody that you know so far? Or not sure. <laughs> um, being a tutor in the Writing Center, especially being a student of Mrs. Felius and Mrs. Gardner, it has influenced me to pursue a degree in English literature. And my backup career is becoming an English teacher, and I would love to come back to East Haven High to teach. Oh, please do. Devlin is also my constant reminder when there's no snacks left in the, in the writing center, there's very important things, and the center should never be without snacks. That's right? True. But yes, he's the eyes and ears and is always keeping on track everything that, that we need to do to keep things moving forward. So it's been great to have a touch point. Um, and if it wasn't, clear in our presentation, there's no adult supervision in the Writing Center when students are there. 
students are handling this this writing center themselves it is truly student run so they have to be there at the beginning of the period to greet students they have to be where they're supposed to be they need to maintain that environment that uh, that students who are coming to be tutored want to be there um, and that was that was a big shift for us as a school kind of implementing a program where we weren't putting an adult in the space to watch them they they are truly um, our student mentors so I'm very proud of the example that they've set for the tutors that are going to follow them wonderful so, so uh, thank you Ms. Gardner and Ms. Ms. Velius yes. for supporting I, these students in this, oh, this venture okay I, I just had a question before you guys finish up um, I sorry I came in late I was at work uh, I apologize um, I, have you how long have you been doing this now when did you start it? This is our first year. We first wrote year, curriculum okay. last year and worked with the Yukon people last year. So we had one class of students that went through the tutoring course last spring. And then, so Val and Devlin and Faith, they were in that, these four were all in that first group. So they tutored first semester. And then semester one this year, we had another group that just went through the course. So now we have two groups of students that are tutoring in the center. And then we'll run the course again next fall. Have you guys gotten positive feedback from students? Like you've helped them with their grades or their projects or maybe, you know, help them with their anxiety about the projects or the, you know, the writing? I feel like we definitely have had positive feedback. Obviously it's been a little bit hard um, as our first year to get people in, but once people are in, they always come back and they tell their friends and I feel like even it's not just the writing process like itself that like the writing itself that we help but we help them with like brainstorming so they're like come they're overwhelmed and they show us the rubric and we're like hey like let's take a step back like what what do you need to do and I feel like they definitely like learn more through just the help of their own like people their age basically I, I don't know if you guys know how important what you guys are doing for the other students like it's so significant because you understand what they're going through right now. Um, whereas, you know, teachers, and, and just as a peer, it's, it's a whole different, a different thing. And, and um, you guys can just make so much more progress than sometimes, you know, an adult, it, not that you aren't adults, but you know what I mean? Like a, a teacher or, or an administrator can. So it, it's just such important work. And thank you guys so much for, um, for doing this. This is fantastic. and her team of parent educators from the Family Resource Center. And they're going to share a little bit of the work that they do uh, in our community with you. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Marissa Velasquez. Um, these are my amazing staff here. We are, I'm going to introduce Ms. Ada. Ms. Ada has been with me. She's my bilingual parent educator. She's been with me for almost two, three years now. Um, she has like 30 years experience working with families in early childhood and she runs our play groups, home visits, works with our in-home providers. Um, and there we go. And she's been such an amazing asset to our community, really helping with our bilingual families get enrolled, 
get involved in preschool, parent workshops. And this is my next uh, staff is Ms. Autumn Hernandez. Ms. Autumn is my family advocate. This is her first year in the Family Resource Center. She is an East Haven High School graduate, 2018. She is a graduate from UConn, um, 2022. She's a mom of a one-year-old, and she's now in graduate school at UConn studying social work. Bob, you're not taking her. Okay, so, and Miss N, yep, I know, I saw it. So Miss Anna Rose is also, uh, she's, uh, she's not here with us tonight, but she's our new uh, caregiver for the Family Resource Center, and she is our firecracker who is hitting the ground running, spreading the word on what we are doing in our community. So I appreciate everyone's time tonight. I want to thank you for having us here, and tonight we're going to do a brief presentation of what we are about in the Family Resource Center. So. Our mission is to promote a comprehensive, community-based system of family support and child development services integrated into the public school system. Um, there are 57 family resource centers across the state of Connecticut. We are fortunate enough to have one that has an amazing, strong relationship with our public school system. We are located um, at Mamaguan School. However, be because of our expansion with our preschool, we have now have a satellite site at Overbrook Early Learning Center. Our goals, we have three primary goals here for the FRC in East Haven. Our goal number one is to promote healthy development and provide strong foundation for children from birth and onward to ensure support and positive programming to assist parents in their roles as their chi child's primary er educator, to provide engaging experiences during the crucial first three years of a child's life. The center aims to set them up for success in school and beyond. That is a huge component of what we do. We are trying to help support families, not only transition to kindergarten, but also for life. Um, so the question is, how do we get funded, right? We are funded through the State Department of Education. Our funding is approximately 112,000 for this one grant. Our main, our main purpose of our grant, or where our budget typically goes, is to our sa staff salaries, professional development, family literacy activities, um, partnerships, um, we have a very strong partnership with the Connecticut um, Diaper Bank, CT Food Share, and um, we promote parent workshops and other educational activities that you know we we hear from the families that they need. Um, we offer different services um, in the FRC world there are seven components that all the FRCs, that's part of our grant, all the FRCs are able to partake in. In East Haven, our biggest component in our program are the playgroups. We have weekly playgroups, um, home visitation program, which I'm going to elaborate more on in, in the presentation, our preschool program, adult education, parent workshops, East Haven Diaper Bank, CT Mobile, mobile Food Share, Early Intervention Screening, and Support Training for Daycare Providers. And also, we're really trying to push in to Mamaguan School with a positive youth development. We're working with our fifth graders on a lunch bunch around kindness. So we're in there working with our students and really trying to push that positive um, uh, youth development. Here are some pictures of some of our activities that we have. Um, you could see our library. Um, we have a very strong partnership with Hageman, Hageman Library now. Uh, once a month, there's Miss Sarah. She's here to support. Uh, once a month, Miss Ada, Miss Autumn, and sometimes Jean from Adult Ed go to Hageman, and we have a bilingual literacy hour. It has been so fun. We're gathering our families, and every family gets a book. 
We are trying to get literacy spread throughout this community. Reading is so important. Get them excited for learning. So once a month, it's been a really great kickoff and a really powerful partnership with our, with our library. Um, and then we work with CT Food Share. You see in there, there's our preschool um, pep program. And as you can see on the far right, our lunch bunch. So here's our data. Data is really important, right? So COVID hit playgroups. No one could come into our buildings. Playgroups kind of got, you know, Squash, but however, we were doing them virtually. We really never, we never shut down. So our playgroup enrollment virtually was probably 11 families. Um, then we started building our capacity to 14. Now we're up to 57 families throughout the week that come to our playgroup. We, if we had more room and maybe more time, we probably would get more, more families. But Fifth, you know, throughout the week, it's a it's a big pop in play group. So we're we appreciate um, the collaboration with Hageman because we use utilize their space as well. Then here we have our diaper bank enrollment. So in 2020, we formed a partnership with CT Diaper Bank. Um, we went out for the grant. We got it. Since then, the grant funds declined. So now, where we were used to giving 100 diapers a month, now we're only able to give 25 to a family. Families get free diapers. Cost of diapers, if you're new, if you're new parents, you know it's very costly. So these families come to us, they live in East Haven, and they sign up once a month and they get free diapers for their children. We also give out, um, we get menstrual uh, products. We, we hand, we've been working with the rec department. We've been providing them with some resources. And we just had a collaboration with the senior center today. And we're going to be providing them with some resources as well that we get for free. So our enrollment for our diaper bank has increased tremendously. In one year, we increased 80 more families. So now we're at 114 monthly distribution. Um, and here's our food distribution allocation. February alone, uh, February 20th, this was the last time we took our data, we served 170 throughout the month, 170 people in that month who came to receive free food at our, free, uh, uh, at our monthly food distribution at, um, what is it, Grace Fellowship Church. So we're there once uh, every two weeks, and... Um, it's been a really, people come up, they line up in, in all elements, rain, snow, these guys are out there, doesn't matter, we have our hats, our gloves, whatever it is, whatever it takes, and we're serving our community. And I have to tell you, in 2020, when we shut down, we were out there serving here, in this building, in the back, just serving families, and that was drive up and go, 300 people we would serve. So we really never stopped. The need is there, the need is big, and um, I really value our partnership with CT Food Share because they have been tremendous in supporting us to ensure that everybody gets healthy food, fresh fruits, vegetables, and you know, so on. So you could see that has increased. Another big piece which I talked about before was our home visitation. Home visits is something that we believe in and, and we feel it's such an important, critical component of why we are who we are. We make those relationships, we make those connections. So you're going to see that, if you just kind of move over a little bit, we're at 190 home visits. How do we do that? Well, we tap into our preschool kids. We have 180 students enrolled at Overbrook. Every child gets a home visit. We are working hard. Now, you mind you, we don't have a big staff. One, two, three, and Anna Rose, it's us. But we are determined to make those connections to make sure that every child that registers for Overbrook we're making that connection with that family. We want to help them. What do you need? How can we make this transition supportive? What are your fears? What can we do? How can we, you need food, you need diapers, don't worry. You need help with potty training, we're there for you. How can we do it? So we make those connections. That is a big piece 
of what we do here. So home visits, yep. Um, and we're hoping to increase that number. So once we do a home visit, doesn't mean we stop. What we're, our plan is, we get them, we do our initial screen, we screen all the, they screen all the children with the ages and stages uh, screening assessment. Early intervention is our number, another piece of our puzzle. We wanna make sure that we have baseline data for those kids that are going into preschool. We meet with the family, we do the home visit. The next visit is now the teacher. The teacher, the parent educator, and the parent. Then, if the parent wants to continue home visits, then we, they keep moving on and they have that relationship with the teachers. And I would say a big piece of the time, that relationship with um, the parent educator and the parent continues because they have a safe place to go. If there's an issue, they know who they can connect with. Um, another part of our, our piece is advocacy. Uh, every year, uh, we go to the state capitol and we make some noise. All 57 FRC centers across the state of Connecticut, we wear our green scarves, we make some noise, we let them know we need some funding. We have families that are in need. How can you help us? And right now, I'm really proud to say that last year, um, East Haven was put on the map because I was the president for the FRC Alliance last year. I did step down because my plate was full, but we did get an increase. It took 20 years, but we got an increase last year. It wasn't big, but it was an increase, and I'm holding on to that. So we are still pushing. Uh, the, right now, you know, everything's in negotiation. We should have a budget come May, but as long as we don't get cut, we're good, and we're going to F, the, our alliance is very strong. Family resource centers across the state are very strong and they make noise because it takes a special kind of individual, individual to work for a family resource center. You have to have that passion, that dedication. You have to understand the need. And there's 57 that do that. So um, that's okay. So one of the... Can you handle that piece for me? Because I'm going to forget. Um, one of the other pieces that we're working towards, our first goal is, our first step is awareness. We want to make sure that our community in East Haven knows we exist. We are here. We want to make sure that someone that knows someone that knows someone says, hey, you need diapers? Go to the FRC. They're going to help you. You guys need food? You need preschool? You need help with your teenager? We got you. We're here for you. So spreading awareness, informing all the agencies, letting them know that we are, we are in existence and we work in conjunction with our Board of Education. I work with Pupil Services, I work with the superintendent. We work all in a collaborative effort to ensure that this, this community is one and we help, help support the need. Step two is the one I get excited for because this is where, you know, if we get funding, we could expand, right? Have an FRC in every school. Oh my gosh, I'm going to put it out there so that actually happens, right? Um, but we really want to enhance the quality and the health and safety of our FRC, of our preschool program. We want to build, we want to, we want to make our building really, um, like just get it to state of the art. We want more for our preschoolers because you know we believe the foundation starts there, right? Um, we want to uh, increase preschool access, as, um, promote school readiness throughout the expansion of our home visitation process. We want to support the working families and the work, uh, local workforce. We, we're thinking about getting computers if families need help you know, looking for jobs online, we have a little hub, you know, a place where they could fill out online applications, help with resume building, you know, and, and you know, because I know there's other programs that do this, but there, there's so much bigger need, right? Everybody needs a piece in this. Um, cultivate diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have a very big bilingual population from all over, South America, Europe, everywhere, Asia. We want to make sure everyone's included and, and really embrace that, right? So then we also want to expand and maintain our NIAC accreditation. Our preschool holds very high standards. There's lots of things that we need to ensure to have high quality early childhood and make sure we continue to move forward in that direction. So here's where it gets really good. This is 
not my view, but our families. So I was fortunate enough to be a parent educator. I started working in district, I believe, in 2011, and that was my first job. And I have to tell you, I loved it. It was my best job. And I had the opportunity to meet a family, and we kind of surveyed our families before we came out to do this presentation. And like I said before, you know those families, you make those connections, they don't forget you? Well, they find you, right? And they know where you live, they know who you are. And um, this is a little guy, I'll never forget him. He looked like a little meatball, and I loved him to death. And he was climbing up the steps in DC Moore School, and his name is Michael. Michael's now at the academy, and he is just amazing. So here's mom's testimony. Um, FRC was amazing. Playgroup was something both my son and I look forward to. He got to learn skills to make friends. It was very helpful to be able to go every day. I used to love taking him, and I knew that the time when we were there, it was giving him the, the tools to grow. Um, he learned so many things. He loved when special guests would come, like there was a music lady who brought her instruments and, a, and an animal show. It was so nice for me to be with other moms going through motherhood. We also had home visits with Miss Marissa, with Miss, which my son loved. He looked forward to what the new activity she would bring over. Now my son, student council president, and an honor society has done many leadership conferences. I like to think of the FRC as a stepping stone to his success. Michael Avila, 2012. So that's one of our testimonies. Um, and I think um, Ms. Autumn is also going to share a testimony from a parent. With a gentle, sorry, with a gentle push, with gentle pushes from an overbrook teacher, Miss Jenny Destasio, I took, I then, excuse me, I took my then 14-month-old son to East Haven FRC's playgroup for the first time. It was August 2022, and I was nervous. It was the first time we were getting out of the house and into the community after COVID arrived. After a year of staying home with my infant, I knew it was time to get back to normal life and socialize more with others. Mrs. Ada Cruz an FRC parent educator made that transition smooth for us. She comforted us with her bright smile and gentle voice. She always made us feel welcomed and she helped us find a home in the FRC. Our once a week visit quickly turned into multiple visits a week. She watched my son grow and come to his toddlerhood and formed an amazing relationship with him. He cannot leave the building unless she personally holds his hand and walks him to the car. It has become their tradition. Every week he is excited to go he smiles at the bare mention of Miss Ada's name. In the days that the FRC is closed, he is sad. Through the FRC's playgroup, my son and I have had the opportunity to connect with families in the community who have children around the same age. When I had concerns about my son's speech progression, Miss Ada was able to point me to the direction of Birth to Three program, and she was willing to help me with the referral. The FRC has held parent education sessions on child-specific topics, and I was able to sit in during a potty training presentation. Currently going through the, pro the process, the information received has been helpful. We also are currently enjoying the new recent partnership with Hagen Memorial Library, where the FRC Playgroup and the librarian, Miss Sasha, meets on Fridays for a story time and related activity. Though the FRC has done much for us, I have also seen it serve others. I have heard wonderful things about home visits. I have firsthand witnessed a diaper bank in action as parents in need took part. I have seen the donations of books and food, and I have seen the invitation extended to parents to participate in a leadership program offered by the University of Connecticut. From what I have witnessed over the past year and a half, the FRC is always willing to go above and beyond to help others. They are always thinking of new ways in which to reach the residents of East Haven. As someone in the community, I am thankful for that. Sharonda Kennedy. So these are some of our testimonies. Um, you all received the packet tonight. There's more testimonies there for you to read at your, when, you, when you feel free. Um, but if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to ask, or if you know um, any family that's in need, we are here to support. Thank you for your time.
very inspiring. So thank you. Thank you for trusting me, for giving me the opportunity. I feel very fortunate to be in this position, in this district. Not many people um, that are in my role have this type of support. And I cannot thank the board and my administration enough for this opportunity to be able to serve in this capacity. So thank you so much for trusting us to do our work.